There is a lot of controversy regarding if and when you should neuter your pets. And although many studies have been performed over the years to determine the risks versus benefit, the results still seem to be somewhat inconclusive. So in this video, I'm going to be completely transparent and lay down all the pros and cons of neutering, backed by scientific evidence, so that you can be a responsible pet owner that can make your own informed decision. I will not try and force my professional opinion as a veterinarian on anyone, but will rather present to you both sides of the argument in an easily comparable manner, so that you can be properly educated in order to determine what is best for your beloved pet. Okay, let's get right into it. Nutrying is the process of removing all or part of a dog's reproductive organs so that they are unable to reproduce. The term neuter actually applies to both sexes, while the term spay refers to female and castrate to male animals. Neutering is the most commonly preferred method for sexual sterilization. Most veterinarians recommend that you should neuter your dog between 6 and 9 months of age. The reasoning behind this is that at 6 months of age, pets are fully vaccinated and have matured to the point where they react to anesthesia and surgery like adults, which reduces the surgical risks substantially. Now let's first start with the pros of nutrient your pet. There is no denial that there is a huge overpopulation problem with pets all around the world, which often results in animals needing to be put down when shelters are flooded. Multiple studies have found that sexually intact dogs and cats are more likely to be given up to humane organizations than those who are neutered. This results in an estimated 1.5 million shelter animals being euthanized in the US alone every year, according to the ASPCA. The two main concerns here are that the majority of the surrendered animals are from unwanted litters and should sexually intact dogs be adopted, they may reproduce and repopulate those shelters again. This is mostly at fault of irresponsible pet owners who do not have a sound knowledge of animal reproduction. Thus, neutering unowned animals is an obvious attempt to maintain proper pet population control. Behavioral problems, also known as sexually dimorphic behaviors, is one of the most common reasons why pets are surrendered. These include things like roaming, mounting, and urine spraying. Now, gonadotectomy, which is the removal of the testes or the ovaries, have been correlated with a decrease in the sexually dimorphic behaviors due to the decrease in the gonadal steroid hormone. Sexual behaviors in male cats, such as roaming, fighting, and urine spraying, for example, makes them extremely undesirable and often unsafe to be kept as household pets. Castration is therefore beneficial to remove these behaviors and make them more tolerant for pet owners. One large-scale study of over 1,800 dogs also revealed a decrease in separation anxiety and submissive urination associated with gonadotectomy performed before dogs were 5 months of age. Mammary gland tumors are the most common tumors of female dogs and third most common tumors of female cats. They are extremely malignant, which means they can easily spread to other organs, especially the lungs, which often results in the animal being put down upon diagnosis. Maintenance of a sexually intact status is a major risk factor for the development of mammary gland tumors, of which the risk increases substantially with age. One study found that sexually intact dogs and cats have seven times greater risk of developing mammary gland tumors when they get older compared to spayed dogs and cats. Myometra is an infection of the uterus which has the potential to become fatal if left untreated. It is highly prevalent in all the intact female dogs and cats but can be treated successfully with an ovarian hysterectomy. BPH is a very common condition in all the sexually intact male dogs which predisposes them to prostatitis, which is a very painful condition that can lead to constipation and painful urination. Once again, castration forms an integral part in the treatment and prevention of BPH in dogs. Testicular tumors are the second most common tumor type in male dogs, and even though they have a low rate of malignancy, castration is curative. Ovarian and uterine tumors are uncommon in dogs and cats, and metastasis is very rare, but once again, Spaying is curative in most situations. Several studies have revealed an increase in lifespan for gonadectomized animals, 
when compared with that for sexually intact animals. This may be a reflection of enhanced care of animals by owners who made the investment of surgery or a decrease in risk associated behaviors such as roaming in gonadectomized animals. Now that I've given you the pros, let's dig into the cons of neutering your pet. As of any surgical procedure, the immediate concerns of neutering include the usual anesthetic and surgical complications such as bleeding, infection and death. These risks are relatively low in routine neutering, however they can be increased for some animals due to other pre-existing health factors. It has been reported that spayed female dogs have an increased risk of developing urinary tract infections and juvenile or recessed vulvas when spayed before puberty. Male dogs castrated before puberty had less penile development and male cats had a decreased ability to extrude the penis. Contrary to popular belief, multiple studies have failed to detect a correlation between gonadectomy of male cats at any age and a decrease in size of the urethra, which could lead to urethral obstruction. Other studies, however, did find that male cats had an increased risk of developing lower urinary tract disease. Urinary mechanism sphincter incompetence also known as estrogen responsive urinary incontinence is a common problem in female dogs that have been spayed before three months of age. This is a multifactorial problem that is also influenced by breed, body size, obesity, hormones and the urethral anatomy. Luckily, urinary incontinence can easily be controlled with medical treatments. Obesity is the most common nutritional disorder of dogs and cats and gonadectomy is commonly reported to be a risk factor for obesity. Estrogen may act as a satiety factor, which would explain the increase in appetite and concurrent food intake in spayed bitches. Obesity is also a multifactorial problem though, and is therefore also influenced by breed, age, housing, ownership, and sex. The timing of the closure of growth plates in long bones is in part controlled by gonadal hormones. In dogs and cats, Gonadectomy at any age before the closure of these growth plates delays that closure and is associated with a lengthening of these long bones. Hip dysplasia is a hereditary condition in dogs that affects both sexes, but it is more prevalent in large and giant breed dogs. One large study revealed that there was an increase in incidence in hip dysplasia in dogs that was neutered before five months of age. It is also reported that CCL rupture is more prevalent in gonadectomized male and female dogs than sexually intact dogs, but it also has a big hereditary component, which is also influenced by body weight and body condition score. Fauché sarcoma is a highly malignant tumor of which the risk of development increases with age and body weight. One popular study investigated close to 700 purebred Rottweiler dogs and found that there was a significant increase in incidence of osteosarcoma in both male and female dogs that had undergone gonadectomy before one year of age. However, it was also reported that the overall incidence of osteosarcoma within this population of dogs was much higher than the general population, which does suggest a hereditary component. Hemangiosarcoma is the most common cardiac tumor in dogs and it has been reported that gonadectomized animals were at an increased risk of developing both splenic and cardiac hemangiosarcoma compared to their intact counterparts. Gonadectomized animals have a risk of development of TCC of approximately three times that of sexually intact animals. Prostrated dogs have been reported to be on average three times more likely to develop prostatic cancer compared to sexually intact male dogs. These tumors are also very malignant often metastasizing to bones. Some studies have revealed an increased risk of development of hypothyroidism for spayed female and castrated male dogs, but hypothyroidism is easily controlled with medical management. One study stated that spayed females had an increased risk of developing fatal pancreatitis as compared with intact females. Another study revealed that the risk of developing adverse reactions to vaccines is 27 to 38 percent greater in neutered dogs as compared to intact dogs. Now Dr. Pete, how am I supposed to know what is best for my pet? As it seems to me like the pros and cons seems to take up equal weight in this argument. Well, there is no one straight answer for all pets and you will therefore need to assess each pet individually. 
It really narrows down to choosing the lesser of two evils and basically ends up becoming a numbers game. Let me give you an example. In this table, adapted from a study in 2007, the incidence highlights the likelihood that a specific disease or injury will occur in a population after a gonadotectomy was performed. And morbidity refers to a condition that is prevalent in more than 1% of the population and is associated with more than 50% morbidity or mortality rates. Let's say, for example, you have a two-month-old Labrador Retriever that is not intended for breeding. This dog will benefit greatly from an ovary hysterectomy performed before a first estrus as a means of preventing mammary gland tumors, which has a high incidence and very high morbidity rate. Because of her breed, she is also predisposed to CCL injury, M. angiosarcoma and obesity. M. angiosarcoma has a very low incidence and obesity can easily be controlled with good husbandry. This leaves CCL injury as the most important possible detriment. Because the incidence of CCL rupture is much lower than that of mammary gland tumors and pyometra, it would make sense to spay the dog and focus on educating yourself on the maintenance of optimal body condition and management techniques that will minimize the potential for CCL injury. And to minimize the risk of the development of urinary incontinence, you may want to wait to perform the spay until the dog is at least three months of age according to these statistics. This same principle can also be applied to other male and female dogs and cats. Now the truth is, the results of the majority of these studies are far from definitive and therefore should be evaluated with a critical eye. The three main reasons for this is as following. Number one, they are retrospective studies instead of prospective studies. Retrospective studies are based on previous historic clinical cases which carries a risk of missing important information from previous medical records. Number two, correlation does not imply causation. Most of these studies have not definitely proven their results and the claims are therefore only based on hypotheses. Even though they may have some reasonable and sensible explanations, the evidence is circumstantial at best. Number three, the statistical methods for establishing a causal relationship is questionable. Most of these studies have very small sample sizes which could lead to statistically significant results even when there isn't one. Also, the way that these results are calculated is often subject to a built-in selection bias. So in essence, further research and studies will need to be conducted in statistically significant manners in order to validate these conclusions. So by now, it should be clear that each pet should be considered as an individual and the benefits and detriments of removing the gonads should be weighed up against each other. There is no single solution that fits every dog. If you do decide not to nurture your pet, please understand that you need to fully commit to containing your pets properly in order to prevent them from adding to the mass pet overpopulation problem the world is currently facing. The internet is full of easy to access information and in today's digital age it can be very easy to be misled by false exaggerated claims and statements. It is extremely important for you as a pet owner to be proactive, to do your own proper research and therefore to only trust reliable scientific backed sources. In the end, I know that you only want what is best for your pet and that is admirable. That is why I created this channel, in order to address difficult topics in a way that can be a bit more easily understood and consumed. I truly hope that I was of value to you and that you are now fully equipped to make your own informed decision regarding whether or not your pet should be neutered. I have linked all the articles that I've mentioned in this video down in the description below. Please feel free to let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or if you would like me to explain something a bit more in depth. Please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and your family and consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. As always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers!